Right. If I seem annoyed, there's a reason for it. Not only do I look like a mushroom, but uh, I've tried to record this video uh, once before, actually, and um, it it ended with me give, pouring my heart out uh, in an impassioned defense of contemporary classical music. You'll never hear it because the audio uh, file was corrupted or didn't record, but there, there's nothing but um, squeaks and jips. Uh, and and it, it, it has annoyed me significantly. So my poor aching bones have been dragged back here to give a second recap to this video. You don't get to see my first. Um, so as such, I'm going to be a lot more concise and a lot less nice. Uh, so let's see what this guy has to say. I know. Do you? You don't know. So, a while ago, I posted a review of Yat Van Sweden's debut with the New York Philharmonic, which I frankly didn't like. And I especially didn't like the new contemporary piece by Ashley Fear called Filament. And I said some slightly critical things about it. Ten minutes of demonic possession, followed by four minutes of a traffic accident in the Holland Tunnel. Not selling me on how bad this is yet, let's go on. At any rate, some of the people commenting on my video stuck up for Ashley Fear, at least implicitly by saying that I didn't know what I was talking about, and I thought, who could possibly like music like that? It's not as though you're gonna go home after hard day's work and listen to this. Two words. With ease. I would easily go home and listen to that. Um, but again, this sounds like a climactic Uh, lots of high partials, this is a soprano warbling in the background, there's lots of extended techniques in the percussion. Uh, it's lovely, lovely stuff, I, I, and it needs context. So, I, I don't know um, what in the 14 minute piece led up to here, um, but uh, I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's, it's great or it's magnificent, I'm just saying that this, this is not a place that I would be um, at all disturbed by someone going in the composition. So why don't we instead take a listen to the music written by the composers who commented on my YouTube video because, quite frankly, the only people who could possibly stick up for music like that are the sort of people who write music like that themselves. Guilty as charged. The only people who could possibly stick up for music like that are the sort of people who write music like that themselves, and it turns out to be the case. So I'm just going to play a couple of their pieces and let you guys decide what you think. So, first up we have Pedro Proenza. Now, I may not be saying his name correctly here because he only has one capital letter and he's put it very near but not quite at the end of his name, which is not the traditional placement. Uh, but anyways, let's listen to one of his most popular hits on YouTube. Um, I'm not going to play the most popular video he has on YouTube uh, because it's a song entitled Please don't make fun of my small penis. Uh, I'm going to instead play his second most popular song. This has 311 views uh, called Have You Made Contact with the Eternal? So let's have a listen to Pedro Proenza. Here we go. gonna say um, I the same thing that I said last time in my more collected first take which you'll never get to hear of course um, you know I don't think it's too bad I think the first five seconds do a credit to themselves um, it's it's an interesting ambience uh, polyrhythm set in and, and it, it gives you that disembodied feeling uh, that's very um, very evocative of the title, I find. So, so prop, props to him for doing that. Um, I, I, but I, I find myself appreciating that little um, bass run down to the keyboard, little flash. Um, it, it's it's quite innovative. The rest of it um, is, is 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 I'll take it or leave it. But it's not it's not a um, it's 
really not that bad if you have an ear that can follow these, um, well, I'm not going to say subtleties because it's played by a media recording, but these, um, this language, so to speak. The violin has just had to scratch his... That, that part always gets me. Blah, 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 blah. It's, uh, oh, that's good. That's enough. That's enough of Pedro Proenza. Well, um, maybe it's not. Let's listen to Please Don't Make Fun of My Small Penis, just in case that turns out to be a little bit better. No, it's not better. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would not have expected that from a piece of that name either. Um, that is that is excellence. Um, you know, there's submer subversive masterpieces, but um, I mean, if you're looking for a straw man, that's a lovely place to a uh, lovely place to go. But no, obviously, um, I don't think that that's too bad. I I, I more this is this is this is um, I think where I'll start my little rant is I I I find it discouraging that people um, judge a composition based more off the materials that are used rather than how they are used, uh, because it conflicts, well, it first of all conflicts with my idea of music, uh, that is, uh, as a study, um, the, I have a, a long explanation for it that's actually become quite a joke in my Discord server, you can join it in the bio, it's, it's quite a fun place. Um, but they, they, they've used my, um, explanation or, or slash, um, you know, humish, uh, Kant, Kantian, uh, definition of, of art as, as a copy pasta. And I think that's very funny because it's, it's certainly something that is, is too wordy. It, it, it's, it's dense and, and, you know, probably not as clever as it, it as it makes it out to be. So it's um it's very it's it's very funny that they they take that and <laughs> whenever the conversation gets a bit convoluted they'll they'll just pop that in there. So I love that. But um I've forgotten what I was originally gonna say. But the um I think to enjoy music, uh particularly that challenges you and that's outside of your realm of understanding, you need to look less at what it's made of and more at how it changes between the things that it's made of. Um, and if if you look at it like that, then you will be able to enjoy a lot more music um, and a lot more genres of music. Um, but it also m means that uh, you can have a more nuanced dislike of, of music that you consider to not be your kind of thing, which um, I can assure you, in this video, we do not get. We have not lost hope. Also commenting on the YouTube video, contemporary composer living in Chicago, Jack Langdon. Alright, uh, he has a SoundCloud page, let's go listen to his SoundCloud. Um, what's his most popular thing here? Mm -hmm. Interiority for a string quartet, says. 361 views. All right. I'm having a growing respect, uh, an ever-growing respect, for the use of string quartet in um, contemporary ensemble. Uh, I, when I make videos in the future, because I've broken out my... Um, if my voice sounds a little husky, it's because I've been breathing sawdust all day. I've been working on a project, a super, super top-secret project. Um, that as uh, is known to only a few of you, um, I, and I might I might document my progress in good time, but um, I I, f I find that uh, probably the best contemporary music or some of the best contemporary music is chamber music, whereas I find some of the worst um, classical era music uh, and most insufferable insufferably cliched uh, romantic era music is the chamber works um sorry to you chamber players you're you're very strange i i do like you a lot but i'm criticizing your repertoire um but as for modern works um 
you know, I'm 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 much more likely to find something that I really, really resonate with in in chamber. Uh, at least that's what I'm finding thus far. I do also like the solo pieces. Uh, when you get to a, a orchestral level, um, I find that a lot of composers, uh, modern composers, can't make it work simply because they have so much to work with and so many. Um, so many effects that have been unearthed for the instrument. So it's better better to keep it, uh, I think, for most composers, uh, say, uh, Ligeti, uh, Zanakis, uh, and, and company. I, I think they can do it, but that's only because they're really good. Stay humble. Let's have a listen. Silence for Jack Langdon. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll say what I said last time, is that this sounds like a fairly typical um, post grise uh, you know, spectralist work. It, it, it's, um, or neo-spectralist or post-spectralist, I don't know the exact definition, but it's essentially, um, it's a very simple piece so far, uh, and I, I need to listen to it in full, um, in context. But the material is simple. Boom, boom, boom. It, it's, it's essentially... Um, permutations of a fifth, or or, uh, or a falling fourth. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking rise and fall. Anyway, um, it, it, it's sorry, it's gone to my head a little, but the um, very simple interval, very simple uh motif, um, uh, and the the chord is relatively simple as well. It plays around with a bit of intonation, um, and then at the end it catches this harmony. Uh, or, or one of the overtones, like a whip crack, um, and it gives it a kind of an oriental feeling. This is very unpleasant. It's made of very simple parts. I, 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 find this, I find this quite catchy. I actually want to pull my eyes out and stuff them in my ears. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, okay, I could be wrong. Yeah, you know, it's just a fair, fairly typical, well-done post-spectral work. Um, and we're, we're even beginning to get into a little bit of, of development, so uh, talk about writing off pieces before they even begin. Yeah, some of my... Um, some of my favourite modern pieces are uh, like uh, Haas's uh, Limited Approximations. I, I wasn't I wasn't a big fan of it um, in the first uh, you know minute two minutes, but you know then then it started started to get going. Didn't really like the first movement of the um, Turangalia Symphony by Messiaen. Got going after a while, and 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 you know now it's now it's um, one of those things I desperately want to get my grubby little mitts on, uh, full full conductor score to be able to study it. Um, what's an, what's another work? Um, I was I was never a big fan of say um, the Mahler, uh, well many of the Mahler symphonies, um, just because I I wasn't a big fan of of how their first movements were done. Um, so I'd never, I never really get past the first movement of the uh, of the sixth. I, I love the sixth now, but it was just kind of um, kind of a slog to get through at the time. But yeah, you you've got to take these works for what they are. If you haven't got time for that, then well, I, I would advise you to have less of an opinion on it. I suppose, or at least be less confident that your opinion is well informed and correct. But I think that's bad music. Just for comparison, let's listen good. to a little other music, just briefly. Some highly traditional music.
All right, all right. Maybe hmm. some Brahms. I'm sure you guys know my opinion on Brahms. Never, never goes far. Which would you rather? Not even, not even, not when it doesn't have to. Um, sometimes I think Brahms sets up these, these, um, these scenarios, these, these musical progressions that need excess and he never delivers. Um, it's almost as if he's afraid of too much expression. And I think for me, that is a cardinal sin, uh, and I can't forgive him for it because everything else is, is excellent, but it is not invariably, but often squandered. Um, but that's just, just a little diatribe. Which would you rather listen to? Honestly, just, just out of, out of intrigue alone, um, I, I would go with either the Bach or the string, uh, string quartet. The Brahm, the Brahms is all right, it's melodic, but I think what I really want to focus on is his faces during, let's see if we can find it. Just that kind of, that kind of expression. Just look at that. It's, it's a contented expression. It's not, I, I don't want to construe it as being smug, although there's plenty of smugness coming off this guy, but there's plenty of smugness coming off me. It's, it's, it's a, it's a bad habit that we, uh, pseudo-intellectuals have. Um, this guy is in his zone. He's, he's happy, he's flourishing, he's, he's well moisturized, um, he has no fear. He's a cat by a fireplace. There's nothing coming to get him. No work that has to be done. He's he's escaped. He's he's having this moment, this reverie, in which he nothing is challenging him. He's just floating along in 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 a current of um of of empty bliss. Um. That's something that personally, I mean, to think of myself doing that, that disturbs me. I'm not sure about you, but um, I'm all right with the concept of peace. But I think when you are militant against everything that um, does not give you peace and that presents itself as challenging, Regardless of, of, of quality, I'm not saying that you can't criticise um, pieces that you don't like when you don't like them, but I feel for this gentleman and for, for, for the, vari for the um, vast majority of classical music listeners, they go to classical music not to learn, but to be cuddled um, and look to experience uh, in any, in any meaningful and non-gentrified version of the word, but to be stroked and, and, and nestled and, oh, it's, it's, it's kind of icky to think about, but essentially to consume. They, they consume classical music as if, um, it's, it's a, pill or a a drug or a, a something that they can use to um transcend not just above uh the worries of the world but above the very need to be concerned um and that that's well it's disgusting to me but you know i i can understand it because Every, because it's easy it's it's just it's just easy and um i'm not gonna compare bach or um or, or even brahms as much as i dislike him to mcdonald's but i think the allegory stands in that 
Is McDonald's nutritious? No. Is it cheap? It's actually not. Um, is it, you know, is it good for you? Yes. Does it have long-term health consequences? Yes. But, you know, healthy home-cooked meals, um, will, uh, you know, obviously they're still being made, but people will still keep making McDonald's, you know, this massive multi-billion dollar, uh, you know, multi-trillion probably dollar company that it is. Sorry, I'm not up to date with my uh, macroeconomics. Uh, and you know that because I just misused the term macroeconomics. It's actually microeconomics in no particular sector. So, see, I'm not actually that, um, that bad at economics. But the, you know, these big corporations... The, the only reason why a corporation ever gets big is because it's easy. Now, classical music is not as easy as other music, which is why it's not popular music. Um, but popular music um, loses to classical in that it has, classical has this level of sophistication and um, uh, sheer beauty that other genres can copy, but uh, I, I do not believe um, have successfully surpassed. But people take this as an invitation to just kind of dissolve themselves during the listening process in there, to, 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 to lose themselves and to go giddy in, in you know, the, the harmony and, you know, the, the, the cute little melodies. I, I don't agree with that, that school of listening at all. Um, it's it's nothing but sheer uh, pleasure seeking hedonism, and it's to me totally meaningless. Uh, I'm I just suppose I'm disappointed um, in people in general, and for me because I'm not above this, um, but that we as 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 uh, a race of people would be so um, hell-bent upon uh, consumption, um, the consumption of pleasurable things, that we will, you know, we'll, we would rather consume than find, or if you believe you can, make meaning. Um, it's, it's always the short-term solution, and yeah, there's something about that deep within me that, that revolts that that finds it um irreconcilably disgusting i'm not saying that you're if you listen to music for pleasure uh you'll find it disgusting but uh I, I find you disgusting i don't but i i find that concept uh disturbing personally um i don't listen to music in praise or or worship of sound i listen to music as a um as, as concept, um, as, as is communicated by sound, but the music is not the sound itself. It is rather the qualities that emerge from changes between sound states. Um, and I, I believe, well, at least that, that enables me to, to believe that I can listen to music in a far more how would one say, primordial way, um, that is less encumbered by uh, constructs of society, that is, um, you know, our 12-tone uh, Western harmony system, um, and, and an attempt to, to branch out into the sheer, um, well, the music behind the sound. And again, I sound very pretentious, and probably am, but... I've, I've, I mean, maybe I've just feel challenged by this guy. He can't be more pretentious than I can. Uh, who does he think he is with all his books and his, uh, his cheap tie and his headphones? You know, it's an impressive collection of books. Uh, I'll be interested to see exactly how many he has read. Um, but you know, my point is, I would discourage anyone to, uh, to listen to music, particularly classical music, 
just for the pleasure of it. Not for my sake, not for the music's sake, but for your sake, because I think there's, there's a lot more in there than simply closing your eyes and being uh, snug as a bug in a rug. You don't deserve to feel safe. Were there better ways of phrasing that? Maybe there were. But I don't think anyone should be above taking leave of preconception and prejudice and just having a bit of a go at, well, something fresh. You might learn something. Some Brahms? Who do you think they are? Alright, so fair enough. Let's listen to the music of a second-rate composer. Uh, I actually have a collection here of second-rate composers. Cacciaturian, Raspighi, uh, I mean, they're, they're okay. Uh, Carlo Gesualdo. Carlo. Now this part makes my blood boil. I love Gesualdo. Um, not necessarily as a role model, although uh, if you know my position on separating art from the artist, I claim that uh, in any true case of artistry, art is the artist, and people are simply very complex. Um, it's it's person, you know, uh, Gesualdo was a murderer, but he also wrote some of the um, most influential and uh, fascinatingly ahead of their time uh, madrigals of of um, the entire, uh, you know, pre-romantic era. I mean, I don't think anyone was writing. Uh, magicals in in uh romantic era but the, the charmody only really caught up later on um later on into the romantic era uh you know those 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 um modal interchanges that the chromaticism it's gorgeous stuff now let's see what our dear friend has to say about oh, Gesualdo. uh Gesualdo was an italian nobleman a prince in fact a man of re i don't think i finished my sentence anyway i'm saying that you can compose gorgeous things and be a terrible person at the same time. It means it simply means that, like all people, you have the ability to do great good, and the ability, uh, and and I would say the predisposition to do great evil. Good and evil being, uh, you know, try to define those for me, will you? Rather middling talent as far as composition goes. Man, a prince, in fact, a man of rather middling talent as far as composition goes. Um, best known for being a murderer. Uh, let's see. We'll listen to his most popular piece, which on Spotify has 800,000, almost 800,000 listens, which is not a lot considering that's all time since the 18th century, but well, let's give it a listen anyway. Born 1566, I think. Surprisingly chromatic. <laughs> A little surprising, uh, not my favorite thing. Certainly listenable. Alright. Well, I'm not saying that there's necessarily a, a co connection here, but the fact he puts um, surprising uh, as the clause directly before, um, uh, not my favourite thing. I, I don't know, I feel as if he subconsciously connects those. Again, I'm no true crime investigator. Uh, I know we've, we've, we've probably all seen those videos where, um, you know, someone with, uh, you know, a deep voice uh, analyses uh, interrogation tapes and says, "Oh, now, now the power dynamics are shifting." I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be that. I'm just saying, I understand where people come from. Um, that is, it. I don't, I don't get it. Um, or rather, it's uncomfortable to me. It's new to me. Therefore, I, it's not my favorite thing. But I, I can, um, I can put it in, 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 in this little, uh, little box and just say, yeah, 
it's 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 valid. It doesn't go too far. Well, once again, suppose that that's not fair because even though Gesualdo is sort of a second-rate composer, he's also a very old one. So to be absolutely fair, let's compare these guys to a contemporary composer, one who's actually writing music today. Um, we'll listen to Walter Taib, the beginning of his Alchemist Symphony. Uh, first movement, Santiago's Dream. So I'm just going to cut you off right there. That is one of the most. Uh, I should probably stop. Just not beat around the bush. It sounds like watered down uh, Hofhannes. Not sure if you've heard who he is. He is a um, modern symphonist. Uh, wrote in a, in a, in a uh, uh, supremely tonal style like that. Um, like some of his works, his uh, Mount St. Helens symphony is pretty nice, but I haven't listened to all of his symphonies because he wrote 67 of them, which is incredibly prolific for a modern day composer. Over 400 opus numbers, um, and rivaling, say, Journey. Not really, but uh, you know, it's it. That right there was just drab, film score ish, would work with visuals. But without it, um, it sounds like uh, when 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 I when I occasionally would talk to people at my school when I was going there, um, I kind of gave up on that pretty quickly. Um, they would tell me I listen to classical music. I was like, what? Well, really? What do you listen to? And they'll pull out their phones and show me that they listen to that. Now I respect them. I, I, I was like, it's it's easy listening. It, it doesn't challenge you again. Um, it's very um, serene. Uh, um, doesn't try to do anything that it's not. Um, or, or, or is beyond the scope of uh, simple lushness. Uh, it's like it's like if you if you took everything that made Vaughan Williams good, and took everything that made Vaughan Williams bad, and just made Vaughan Williams totally um, immemorable and mediocre. I mean, yeah. How not hold this up? As or, or of good music, it doesn't even approach being good music. It's 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 not good, um, in my uh, my opinion. Not only because it's unchallenging, and not only because it's completely unoriginal, not only because it's trite. Um, we've kind of run out of ways to insult it now, haven't I? I'm just I I just don't think that it's a good comparison to make between people who um. I'm necessarily trying to push boundaries because that that's that's less of a less of a big thing these days. Um, still, it's still around, but we've we've, we've settled the accelerationism down a little bit, which I'm I'm very happy about. Um, but it's it's unfair to try to um, compare uh, that which attempts to provoke thought with that which attempts to sell tickets to an Andre Rio concert. How about that? It's tonal. And as a result, you might actually want to listen to it. Of course, that's just my opinion. So which would you rather listen to? At least he said that it was just his opinion. So it's, 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 it's all forgiven. Or maybe... Well, again, beginning of piece, end of piece. You need context for both. If you played me the um, the final sequence of the bark, maybe it would work better on its own. But again, as you get more and more um, specialized, you need more and more um, understanding. Uh, 
of what comes before. Um, and you know, that would, that's the same thing, say for, um, early, uh, early Baroque pieces or, or, um, even, um, classical pieces. I find that say they, they are pleasant to listen to them, but they're slog to listen to if you just like start in the, in the middle of the, uh, the development section. Um, say a Haydn sonata. Start in the middle of the development section. You're totally lost. You don't understand what's going on. Um, and although the sounds are consonant, it's it's kind of like you're being uh, being played for a joke, because nothing nothing really comes together. Not even with the recapitulation. You need the um, exposition. It's 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 or at least for me a, an absolute requirement. So it's unfair to compare those two sound bites. I think. I could be wrong, of course. Let me know in the comments below. If you like Ashley Fear's music, I guess you'll dislike this video. But, in all honesty, if there is a piece of atonal contemporary music or... Like it says atonal, as if it's, it's some kind of slur. Oh, dear. Maybe this one's beyond saving guys, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, if you don't like calling it atonal, that you think will change my mind and open up the world to me that actually sounds like it might want to be listened to by actual human beings at some point. Send it over to me. I'll listen to it with an open mind. Yes. The, the, the fact that he, um, he uh, throws down that gauntlet and then immediately goes back to listening to that inane Taib piece is just a perfect, perfect irony, I think. I don't think I can sum it up much better than that. That little, that little smile on his face, that contentment, that, uh, you know, it's like he's... He's totally serene. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that, uh, people have reasons for listening to music. Some of them do it to just, like he does, I believe, to um, beat themselves into, a, you know, a mindless uh, submission. How do one say? This is, it, it's almost like brutalizing their own thoughts with, with, with this uh, seductive softness in order to gain a, a state of lower consciousness. And then there are people like me who are, you know, miserable. But we deal with it by um, listening to music, and it's generally music that is that is uh, challenging and 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 interesting. And it doesn't just because something's challenging and interesting doesn't mean that you'll like it. Um, but we're willing to give it a shot. Uh, again, most contemporary there's more contemporary pieces I dislike than those that I like. Um, but that's primarily because I disagree with their aesthetic and, in general, their um, their concept of music. Uh, so it's difficult to like them. But I've never given up on them. And I continue to be pleasantly surprised by the things that they come up with. It. So if there's one thing to take away from this video, I think, is what's a, what's a really pithy hedonism killed classical does that work maybe mindless hedonism slaves to hedonism um just being lazy and 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 just floating down a river uh well and, and listening to loud music to drown out the fact that there are crocodiles all around you um yeah, what can I say? Consumer art for consumer guys. Well, that, that, that's all from me. Sorry if I got a bit harsh towards the end. Uh, again, I, I, I look like a pancake. I need to take a shower. I've been, been kind of sweating and, 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 and shedding all day. So, uh, and I uh, almost cut my thumb open with a scroll saw. But it's all for the greater good, I, I feel. And uh, you will be able to reap the benefits of these rewards in good time or maybe you won't maybe i'll i'll burn it in a fit of uh 
Childish Pike.